Brilliant. So um, thank you very much for coming, guys. I'm pleased to be here. As you said, you all know who Visa are, right? That makes my job fairly easily. But here today, I just want to give you maybe a quick reminder of who Visa are, where we are, and the scale we operate at. And a lot of the interesting startups you guys have already seen are attacking the traditional banking industry. And so how are we as Visa going to evolve and change to meet some of those challenges? So step one, we are very big already. Um, I can't take the credit for it. I haven't been working here 66 years, so it's not my success. But we did 3 billion cards in the world last year at over 44 million locations around the world where you can use your Visa card, and it works exactly the same. Um, for the vast majority of our history, that growth was pretty linear. Um, but over the last 10, 15 years, we've seen that skyrocket because of all the trends you're seeing, all the startups here talk about the internet, mobile, smartphones, pushing payments into new places and helping new merchants come online and take Visa cards as well. Um, again, I can't personally take the credit, but I'm going to stand here and do it. Now, that's been the last 60 years of our history, and we've been phenomenally successful. But amid that change, we're seeing a lot of new trends come along, which we think is going to catapult our growth over the next five years. So we'll do 10 times more than we're doing here today. First of all, those smart devices are meaning you're moving from hardware to software, and Visa credentials are ending up in everybody's pocket, everybody's wrist, everybody's car. Um, and the places you can make payments is going to transform as well. Um, connected devices, smart fridges, always a kind of on-running joke. But if you look at the connected car, today everybody who owns a car, it's pretty dumb. It's petrol-based, and you own it exclusively. Cars are pretty soon moving to being autonomous, electric, shared, and connected to the world around them. And that's going to transform the way we pay for payments. Petrol makes up kind of a significant portion of the spend on a Visa card at the moment, and that's all going to disappear in the next few years. But what's going to replace it when you get paper mile insurance? And we think that means that every consumer is going to have 30 times more ways to pay than they have today, and there's going to be 10 times more merchants. We think there's going to be 400 million places you can use your Visa card. Now, how do we be successful in that world? We've had a traditional business, which is at a scale. There's lots of good things about that. Um, there's lots of hard things, right? We've built a closed network where Visa operates in one very specific way. We set the rules for this is how you engage with Visa, this is how it works, and if it doesn't fit the rules, we say no. Um, that's not going to work in a world that's that open and that innovative and that creative. We're going to end up stifling innovation. So we're moving to a world that's not just built by Visa, but enabled by Visa, and changing how can we open our network to support the innovation you've seen over the last couple of days, um, how are we doing working with our clients, not giving them a black box and saying, this is it, you can have it. But how do we actually integrate Visa into the world these guys are trying to build? And actually opening our network with APIs and SDKs. Um, the division I work in is called Innovation and Strategic Partnerships. Um, I'm going to run through a little bit of a detail on what we're doing here um, and where we're going in London. So first of all, we built a bunch of innovation centers. We know that in the traditional visa office, when everyone's sat in their cubicles, we're not working with the people we need to be and not working the way we need to. So we've gone out into the world and where all the innovation is taking part, from Tel Aviv to Berlin and London, out to Singapore and Dubai and New York, where we can actually engage with the entrepreneurs and startups who are changing the world, making a space where when we bring our traditional clients, we can show them what the future is like and help transform the way they're thinking as well. At the heart of that is design thinking. Um, Visa doesn't have a single customer relationship with anyone in this room. But for us to continue to be successful, we need to be focusing on the needs of end consumers like yourselves. How do we actually put that human-centered design into the hands of our traditional partners? Um, it's no secret most banks are fairly focused on the bottom line and maybe customer focus, not the strongest suit. So how do we start changing that conversation with them? How do we actually bring in some of that rapid prototyping? So it doesn't take two years for a bank to deliver a change. But how can we actually start trying to build new products in a matter of weeks, not years. A big part of that is our API approach and our API platform. So about a year ago now, we published our first set of APIs out into the network. Um, we're due to have about 400 endpoints available by the end of this year. Um, and this is really just transforming the way Visa does business. Hands up in the room if you know what ISO 8583 is. Like one, one lucky guy. Um, that's a terrible message format that these is used to get that scale. Um, it's very specific, very close. You need dedicated hardware to deliver it. The APIs mean we can publish our capability to anyone in their bedroom with a laptop. That goes from the traditional, how do you just pay and pe be paid online, to how do you push money directly to someone's Visa card, 
How do you deliver the fraud and authentication and risk services that support that journey? And then finally, how can we start building new insights off our data and new products, something we couldn't do with our traditional infrastructure? Um, the most recent API we've just published is very, very British, but predicting queue length. We've got 60 petabytes of data. We can tell how long it takes to actually queue in every merchant in the world, and we can push that out to the network and enable you guys to build new products on it. Um, so what's my role in this change? Um, click is broken. There we go. Thank you. So I get to lead Visa's venture activity here in Europe, which is the best job in the world. I get to come to places like this and speak to you guys um, and help Visa make those investments in the future. So you can see who we've invested in in the past, and it's very much how can we create exponential growth on our network? How can we work with these partners and these clients to take Visa to places it's never been before and help grow our network in a way that we haven't been able to do over the last few years? Um, from the likes of Square and Stripe, we've made it easier than ever to accept cards, to Marketo, who are actually making it easier than ever before to issue cards and start building a card business. Now, my ask here for you guys is, come and talk to us. Um, we talk about opening technologically. Actually, how can we open broadly and engage with the community better, and what can we do to support you guys? Um, historically, as we said, Visa's said, here's the rules and here's how you play. But we want to know how can we enable and support you guys in the industry, from investors trying to look at the future and how they can educate their investments and make better return on capital, startups, you're trying to integrate payments, come and speak to us about advice and guidance. I think you've got the themes on the wall. You could probably all guess this. What would Visa be interested in, right? Issuing cards, security, authentication, retail, transformation, and open banking. But we want to engage with you guys, talk about how we can work with you to deliver that future. So thank you very much for your time. Look forward to speaking to you all later.